Okay, here with another episode of On the Wrist from Off the Cuff. Today, a really cool reveal for you guys from the brand Spinnaker. A little bit about them. They're really offering classic nautical design aesthetics and an affordable modern package, as well as at very affordable prices. Now, in terms of the type of watch, I'd consider this a dive watch, some key comic and design when you're looking for a diver. Of course, you want water resistance to be some type of screw down crown. You're gonna want something that's tough, legible with a dive time bezel and a diver's extension is always nice if on bracelet. Uh, this also falls falls within kind of a traveler's watch as well because it does have that GMT uh, functionality so you're able to track multiple time zones with relative ease. This is their Bradner and uh, this is the Night Shadow colorway and it's a brand new release. I will, you know, hopefully it'll be released at the time of the publishing of this video. I'll try to line everything up there so uh, definitely check down in the description for a link if you do want to follow up on more uh, information on this piece, but it's essentially a retro compressor inspired diver um, now with the added GMT functionality, which I think is of course great now, especially considering how accessible these movements are thanks to uh, Seiko 5. Now, um, you guys might have seen this watch on my channel before, and that was the previous iteration. Now, essentially, this is a newer upgraded model, and as you guys can see, it even comes with a cool little strap combination that, you know, that kind of makes it up in terms of the colorways, which I think is fun. So with all of that said, guys, you guys can get these for $490 direct from the brand. And uh, yeah, I think they're a lot of fun. So appreciate Spinnaker sending this piece over for me to share with you all. With that said, let's go ahead, zoom the camera out, get this piece in hand and take a closer look. All right, guys. So one of the things that's really going to stand out uh, on this piece is check out the 3D blocks there uh, on that sliding 24 hour scale. That is just so cool. Uh, and I don't know, that's what really m one of the things that stood out about the standard die version. And it's still one of the things that stand out about uh, this particular GMT variation. Also, the, there's a bunch of different colorways in typical Spinnaker fashion, uh, but I like this one because it came with the orange uh, with the blue, and obviously that's going to pair pretty nicely. I mean, you guys know I'm a big bracelet guy, especially when it's a nice bracelet like this, the beads of rice. Of course, this isn't, uh, you know, some uh, luxury level execution uh, in terms of these, these uh, you know, these links and everything like that, but they do a good enough job, especially at the price point under 500 bucks guys, but uh, let's go ahead and dive into some of the other details now This is gonna be a 42 millimeter diameter a 15 millimeter height, which yeah 15 millimeters is pretty thick But I will say that uh, you know in terms of the theme of the watch it it fits fine for me And at least they make an attempt to make this not a slab sided case as you guys can see they do, do uh, Work to make that mid case profile quite thin. Uh, there just happens to be a good amount of one step, two steps, and then another step up on the top uh, in terms of trying to compartmentalize that girth on this watch. Uh, I will say that from a side profile, it's going to look a lot larger than it's actually going to wear while it's on your wrist. And, you know, and, and that's pretty subjective depending on, you know, what shape your wrist is and what size it is. But I will say I think it's completely doable, especially for something within this theme being very sporty, of course. And then, of course, having also that compressor style layout. Now, uh, it does have this internal bi-directional check that out bezel and you can see it has the little uh little decoration there that shows you hey this turns so that is pretty cool if you do want to do any types of timing offsets uh, for your GMT and you guys can see the GMT hand there the uh, crystal is a flat sapphire with a slight boxed edge as you guys can see there so that's nice that they you know they they did go for a flat one so that they didn't want to add any additional height it does have that slight raised uh you know nature to it and that boxed edge but i think that's probably more so to clear the this hand stack of course when you do have a gmt it means you're going to have a taller hand stack because you're going to need room for another hand so 
Uh, I don't think that that was anything that, you know, they could have avoided because it's pretty inherent with making a GMT watch. Now, uh, and when it comes to the other crown, it's a screw down crown, nicely signed, and that's going to be the one that's going to be handling all the time setting and everything like that. Now, the movement inside is a Seiko Instruments NH34. It's a collar GMT, which simply means when you are jumping the hand here, uh, instead of jumping the local hour, you're going to be jumping the GMT hand itself. Uh, the nice thing about that is when you do have this type of setup and you have a date feature, you still have the quick set date uh, versus when you have a more of a, a true GMT, quote unquote, or more so just known as a traveler or a flyer's GMT. That's when you're going to be able to jump the hour. But unfortunately, uh, the date you won't be able to quick set. You'll have to cycle through all the way around, which depending on what you prefer can either be more or less useful. Now, the movement itself, uh, 41 hour power reserve, three hertz sweep, so that's gonna be beating at 21,600 vibrations per hour. You do have a nice display case back, which is cool. And that's one of the things I feel like uh, Spinnaker do a good job with, right? Like their watches aren't just made for watching through this. I think they have a lot of great crossover appeal. I mean, when it comes to like, buying a watch for a friend or somebody that's not super into watches. Typically a Spinnaker is a pretty good choice um, just because there's gonna be some level of name recognition because these are very, very popular. And of course you're gonna have a decent amount of specs and they're gonna have things like sapphire crystals and like mechanical movements. And you know, they're gonna have just that little extra level of care uh, to where I think, you know, because of that, they're able to kind of cross over into certain enthusiast pockets in terms of the price point uh, and then also also into, yeah, just non-watch people might see a spinnaker and just really enjoy it. Uh, and get, getting into the dial details, guys, it actually has a very slight sunray dial. Check that out. It's almost not necessarily noticeable depending on the lighting condition. Of course, when you look at it straight on, you're thinking, oh, it's a nice clean black dial. But you can see it's ever so slight, so it's very subtle. So if you're not huge on sunray dials, especially on sporty watches, uh, don't worry. I think you're not going to be upset by this one. Some people love a sunray dial, so you'll be fine. But for those of you that kind of avoid them, um, you know, sometimes depending on the execution, folks can feel they look kind of cheap. Uh, here in this case, I think it looks fine, and I think I like the fact that it's a little bit more on the subtle side, especially when it comes to this color combination, uh, where I think it is a little bit more on the subtle side. But then you do. Have have, of course, pop of color ready to go at any time, and I think that's really cool. I, I like that they did blue keepers as well. And man, look at that hardware! So just let that focus check that out. Nicely milled, even the fingers milled, so nicely signed. And yeah, that's that's clean. And then, of course, nicely signed under on the underside. And you're also going to have quick release spring bars, so that'll be easy to swap out here. Um, also, you're going to see quick release spring bars on this bracelet. Um, another interesting thing is this has 180 meters of water resistance or 18 atmospheres, so 600 feet. So uh, definitely not a, a normal number for a dive watch. Um, but at the same time, it's not just a dive watch, right? It's pretty versatile sports watch, traveler watch type of thing. Um, the hands are finished really cool. Uh, you can see they have a brushed matte finish. And then you do have, of course, some nice painted accents, whether it's that blue center line on the hour and minute or those orange accents uh, and two different tones of orange, uh, whether it be on the seconds hand or the GMT hand. So I think the color theory here is very nice. Of course, you're gonna have uh, the darker, black side versus the lower blue side for the 24 hour scale, uh, kind of denoting AM, PM, or, you know, daylight, evening kind of thing, right? Uh, daylight versus, uh, yeah, uh, low light, nighttime, uh, kind of parts of like 1800 till 6 AM. And then of course, 6 AM until 6 PM. So very, very cool all comes together. You're getting Swiss Super Luminova, uh, which I think is gonna glow pretty nicely, so I'm looking forward to showing you guys that. But uh, yeah, 20 millimeter lugs. You guys can see this is easy to remove, but uh, let's actually get it on wrist and uh, see how it wears. 
Okay guys, as you can see on my seven and a half inch wrist, I think it works really well. And you know, even though my wrist is on the slightly larger side at seven and a half inches, you guys can see it's also quite round. So it's not like it's super flat and wide and accommodating. Um, but you, you guys can notice, of course, if I put my wrist too close to the camera lens, you're gonna get a bit of perspective distortion. It's gonna appear just a little bit larger than it actually is. So what I like to do is keep my wrist nice and low and then just kind of tighten up the frame. So you guys can still get a detailed look, but just uh, add a little bit of a true aspect ratio in terms of how that's gonna lay. And you can see very nicely centered and you're gonna get a nice bit of that uh, sheen from the beads of rice links there. So very, very cool. And you can see, uh, yeah, it's a taller watch, uh, but it's a sports watch, right? So it's not like it's tall for no reason. Um, it doesn't have super deep, um, you know, water resistance, but again, uh, I think aesthetically it all kind of ties in and you can see, of course, at least you're getting some depth on that dial. I think it would be strange to have a less deep dial and still have a watch that was so tall feeling. Um, but I think with the depth of the dial, you guys can see at this angle, let's say, uh, it's actually, you know, I feel like that looks very proportional, but of course, we didn't get too deep into this bracelet because I'll be gonna be swapping it out. But while I'm here, it you guys can see uh, here, it's gonna taper down essentially to uh, 18 millimeters split pin construction on this uh, nice milled folding section, push button, and then of course it does have that flip lock and you do have manual, three positions of manual micro adjust and a traditional stamped divers extension, which is pretty cool. So uh, what I'll do is I'll pop this off now, which essentially, since it does have the quick release or the toolless spring bars here, you just pinch those two together, you pinch these two together, and now you have it right off. Very nice. And uh, let's go ahead and get the strap on, which is actually pretty nice quality, I have to say, in terms of the fact that, yeah, it's a nice rubber Tropic style strap, nice details, you guys can see. It still has that uh, very signature kind of basket weave tapestry texture there, nice borders. Uh, very clean in terms of the transitioning for all of the ventilation slash holes for, you know, giving you a lot more adjustment, which is nice. And then, of course, the very nice uh, hardware. So we go ahead and we pop one side in. We get the other until it snaps, pops. There you go. And then we do the same thing on the opposite side. And if I can, there we go. And check it out. What a looker, I don't know, this one really pops for me and uh, why don't we just demo getting that onto the wrist here. And yeah, about three holes down, boom, very cool. So we'll go ahead and take this beads of rice off the table and the, although I am more of a bracelet guy, guys, wow, this orange tropic really livens it up and just gives it a great summery vibe, which is awesome. So although it's spring now at the time of filming this, I will say that I'm sure, you know, come summertime, this watch is gonna be able to get a lot of love. Check that out, big, bold, and fun. Uh, and it just, again, it doesn't take itself too seriously. You know, the Spinnaker brand, and it's not like some legacy brand that's been around forever and uh, you know has all these horological achievements they're just a brand that likes to make a nice quality product uh, you know at a decent price not the cheapest uh, by any means but also you know at the same time definitely far from unattainable and uh, I think you guys can see that the, yeah this aesthetically is very cool I mean the handset everything flows really really nicely with that said let's actually get it off the wrist set up for some loom shots the light transition and closing thoughts Okay, let's go ahead and hit the lights here. Yes, check that out. Look at that loom. Um, it just goes to work, guys. And that's one of the things that people really enjoy uh, on the enthusiast side, right? Like, I think probably some non-watch enthusiasts might see this and not really care. Um, or they might find it to be, you know, a little bit more novel and be like, oh, that's really cool. And maybe, maybe it'll be the reason they buy this watch over another dive watch. But for those of you that are watch enthusiasts, yeah, this is the type of stuff we kind of like to geek out on. And uh, I think those 3D uh, markers there on that 24-hour scale are really cool and really very different. And it does help kind of set this piece apart. But one thing I always like to work in is a bit of a, a low light transition because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight. A lot of times you're going to find yourself coming in out of buildings, walking underneath overhangs, or just hanging out underneath the shade of a tree. So it is nice to see what these colors, textures, and finishes render like in less 
than optimal lighting, guys. So you can see here, a lot of nice textures, a lot of great color play there. You can see even that little 60 minute track there has a little extra color play, uh, having orange from 60 to 20. And uh, yeah, it's just cool, guys. Even if we get into some harsh lighting conditions, which will be exposed any types of production defects, maybe you're gonna see uh, maybe just some fingerprints on <laughs> that uh, that are completely my fault on the crystal. And then uh, I believe there might have been some small debris on the dial. But at this price point, I'm not going to nitpick too much. Um, and yeah, this is super clean. Very nice. You guys can see the brushing on the case is really well done, nice and uniform. Now again, nothing luxury or anything like that, but it totally does the job. And the nice thing is it feels like a watch you can go out and have fun with and, and actually you know put through its paces. And that's one of the things uh, that sometimes when you buy a really nice watch, you're less inclined to do is to go out and enjoy the watch because you're kind of worried about keeping it really looking tidy and worrying about things like resale value and everything like that. Uh, this is definitely not a watch you need to go find out on the aftermarket one that hopefully you're able to buy new um, at retail price. Uh, you know, and typically a lot of these iterations kind of come and go and sell out uh, in different batches and they'll make their improvements and whatnot. Um, but yeah, this is pretty cool. So, I mean, the other, the dive watch variation I thought was pretty cool. And then you get to add the GMT, which just makes it a lot more fun and uh, ultimately more useful in most situations. So for me guys, closing thoughts on the wrist, very bold wear, tons of presence and personality, definitely clear, sporty, retro vibe. Um, and then in terms of model variants, check out the links in the description for all of the options and availability. Comparable models, tough to say, um, you know, compressor style watches have definitely come back into style, I should say compressor style divers uh, in particular. Uh, but yeah, this one does combine uh, the, the GMT feature set as well. Um, so I might compare it to something like, you know, uh, Seiko GMT, <laughs> Seiko 5, right? That has the same movement. So for me, guys, just jumping to the bottom line, uh, Spinnaker's, uh, you know, I think they smartly converted one of their more popular divers into a versatile GMT watch that really closely rivals Seiko's own entry-level Seiko 5 SSK GMT line. Um, and I think what Spinnaker may lack in brand recognition and heritage, it does make up for in terms of value proposition and fun factor, right? Like you're gonna get the extra straps versus having to go buy yourself a rubber topic strap or, or something like that. I, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a bit more of an inclusive package um, you're also going to get, you know, the quick release spring bars and, and all that side of it. A little bit of extra here and there. And yeah, I, I appreciate that. Um, would I get this over one of those Seiko 5 GMTs? I don't know. It'd be a tough call. Um, it would definitely be a tough call, um, you know, similar in price point. Um, but I think this one is listed a slightly lower. Uh, it just depends on, I guess, if you're going to be getting it at full retail or if you can, you know, get it through a dealer. The good, one of the nice things about Spinnaker, that's also one of the nice things about Seiko, is that, yeah, they are carried by uh, authorized dealers. So you're going to be able to have a little bit of negotiation space. But let me down, no, know down in the comments below kind of which way you're leaning on this. Uh, this definitely offers you uh, a bit more complexity, a bit, uh, you know, more something a bit more bold and uh, that stands out kind of on its own. So let me know down in the comments below. If you like the video, please do a like and if you already, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys. Oh, 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 o